Well, hello everyone. Hi, welcome to this webinar. And uh, in this webinar, we want to explore the winning strategies and tactics for startups lead generation and how you can generate more leads and qualify more leads and actually uh, Quali uh, generate more qualified leads and nurture them for uh, getting more customers and increasing your revenue. My name is Noosh Bharatpur and I'm the CMO and uh, co-founder of Formaloo. And Formaloo is a no-code platform that helps businesses build customer engagement apps super easily. So I'm so happy to uh, tell you that I'm hosting Farooq Shahabi as our guest today. Farooq is a serial entrepreneur with over 10 years of experience with startups, and he has served in key leadership and advisory roles in several startups in 10 plus countries. And he has worked with VCs and accelerators and organizations internationally for the past 10 years. In this webinar, we're exploring the winning strategies for startups, lead generation, and we'll uncover tactics that fuel growth and boost your conversions. As the CMO of Formalu, I have been actively working on lead generation over the past years, and I want to share with you uh, the tactics and strategies that I've came up so far. And I want to show you the best ways Formal can help you generate and qualify leads in the most convenient way. Formaloo is a no-code platform for building customer engagement tools super easily. So go on and Google it, find it, check it out. And it's a great way to build tools that engage your customers and generate more qualified leads. And I'm recording this webinar for those of you who couldn't join at this time and wanted to watch it later. And of course, uh, for those of you who are watching it, of course, you can watch it later on our YouTube channel. So I will upload it to Formaloo's YouTube channel so you can search for Formaloo on YouTube and watch it at any time. So in this webinar, we're going to explore different um, topics and uh, aspects of lead generation and um, lead nurturing. First, we will uh, explore the importance and uh, common challenges of lead generation. And then we will go to ICP, the ideal customer profile, and we will see how you can develop your ICP with lead generation tactics. Then we will see how you can craft your value proposition with lead generation tactics and effective lead magnets. Then we will go on to lead nurturing and conversion. So uh, for, the uh, for the first uh, sections, I'd like to invite Farouk Shahobi on the stage so we can start the webinar. So, hello everyone. I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, thank you all for joining uh, and thank you all for all your support and all of your great feedback that you have given us so far. So uh, I want to the, today to talk to you about lead generation for startups. Almost all of us, I know, we are uh, either a founder of a startup or we are working in a startup. And uh, more often than not, we are asking ourselves how we can engage our customers more efficiently. So for a startup, uh, we no longer even have offices, uh, uh, some of us. Uh, we no longer have a, a, a basically billboards or something else. And our website is our business card. So instead of traditional, uh, the traditional physical business card, uh, when, whenever someone asks what you do, we say, okay, that's the name of our startup and check out our website and see more information. And that's all everyone is looking for from us, uh, coming to our website, see our services, see what they can do with us, and see uh, if, we, if they are our customer or not. So it's very important that when we land a prospect to our website, we make the most use out of them. And uh, what is a prospect? Prospect is anyone that comes to our website and they might be our customer, they, they, might be, they might not be our customers, but they came to our website, they are a real person, and they can turn to our customers 
either right now or in the future. So now we want to talk about lead generation. So we want to turn those prospects, the visitors that came to our website to qualify leads, to identify them, see who they are, are our services, our product right for them or are they not? And if it's a right fit for, their, for themselves, they are now a qualified lead and we want to get their information and turn them into customers. So it's a relationship that doesn't uh, uh, happen in a matter of seconds. It can, but it's usually a matter of days or months even. And it's a relationship between each and one of the, uh, our visitors until they become our customers and we can support them and uh, provide our products and services with them and turn them to satisfied customers. So usually uh, there are two big names that uh, when it comes to lead generation. One is lead generation and one is, one is demand generation. And they are very, very similar, but there are a few differentiation that we want to talk about, talk about. Demand generation is basically the whole marketing itself. So marketing in a, in a very, very simple words is creating demand for our product, for our services. So that's all marketing is. Marketing is creating demand. And uh, for demand generation, which is an umbrella term, uh, it can be anything that we do to create demand for our product, to create demand for our services, from providing contents, from promoting our benefits, uh, on how they can use our services, on use cases, on case studies, by providing social proof on, on why our solution is better than others, why uh, businesses trust us, why customers trust us, anything that can create demand in the, in the mind of our customers. And today we don't want to talk about that. That's a very big thing. We can uh, talk about it for days. But let's say we successfully generated right demand. We have a great website. It's beautiful. It's responsive. It's uh, it has great SEO and a lot of uh, customers are coming to our website, but they are not becoming our customers. So we are getting a lot of visitors, but that's it. After uh, uh, thousands of people are uh, coming to our website every day, but we are getting no customers from them. So something is missing. Uh, something is uh, missing from our relationship with the prospects that we are uh, joining our system. So why? they are landing on our website. Clearly, our websites and our web pages uh, are uh, attractive to them. There is something that, uh, uh, that attracted them to click on Google, click on us, on everything else, and use our webs uh, use our, uh, come to our website and uh, be curious on what we are providing, what products, what services, how can we help them. But they are not becoming our customers. And more often than not, most startups do a very, very cardinal thing here that they are not engaging their website visitors. And that's the main thing that we want to talk uh, about today. So we are getting a lot of prospects, but we are not engaging them. And we think that our customers will come to us no matter what we do. So we just provide the content, we just provide the services, and we are blaming the uh, everything else, why we don't have enough customers. But the main thing is that if we want to tri trigger our customer, our prospects to become our customers, we have to build a relationship with them. And that's called lead generation. So basically, from the moment that a, a website visitors come to our website, we have to engage them to make them see the benefit of our product. It's either for them or not for them, but they should understand that quickly because we don't want unqualified leads, we want qualified leads. We want people that can turn to our customers. We want to build a relationship with them. So we have to engage them to understand what kind of group they belong to. We have to segment them. We have to track their behaviors. And more, more importantly, they have to be felt like they are uh, uh, working with a great company. So that relationship is what lead generation is all about. The first thing is we want to offer them a way to interact with us. That can be as, as simple as, for example, a chatbot. 
that gets their feedback on our website, gets their uh, answer their questions or anything else. Or it can be as big as a product recommendation quiz. So for example, what kind of services do you need? Answer these three questions and we will tell you what service is beneficial for you. That way they can understand that we are uh, listening to their needs and we are trying to figure out the best way possible. It can be a simple newsletter subscription. It can be a big system that uh, custom, our customers can log in and see information that is tailored for them. Anything in between can count as lead generation. The most important thing is one, we want to engage them and two, we want to create an interaction route. What is the interaction route? We want to get their email, get their phone number, any kind of a, a interaction route that we can think of and we can in, implement. Uh, any business is different, but the most uh, popular interaction routes that we have is emails or phone numbers. So we can send texts. So we have to get their contact info so we can contact them, engage them, and they can contact us and they can uh, talk with us. Many websites, great websites, use a chat system inside their, web, uh, inside their website. And that's great because people can uh, interact with us in real time. But some of them don't man the chat system like uh, all the time. And people are coming to the chat system but not seeing anything. So they, they are waiting and waiting for an operator or something, but uh, there is no one. Or in some websites, there are too many visitors and no operator can answer all of these questions. So we have to manage this kind of relationship and interaction that we have with our customers. For example, if we have too much visitors, we have to have a, a chatbot system in place so they can answer most of the questions themselves. So for example, right now, around 90% of our customers, when they interact with our chat system, they answer their own questions because when they say, I, I'm looking for a, a way to create a custom CRM or a, a way to create a survey, a, a tutorial from us pop us automatically uh, from the system and they can say, oh, okay, I got it. I, ha I, ha I have the answer to my question. So there is no need to human interaction. Or if they cannot find the answers inside our help desk or inside our system, they will come and I talk to a real operator, which is a human, and they can talk with them very frequently. So to have a good lead generation, we have to have a goal. What is our goal of the, this lead generation system that in place? Do we want only the contact info? That's not usually a good goal because people hate to put their contact info because they get a lot of a spam emails, promotional emails, and nobody likes those. So getting contact info is not the goal of lead generation. We should have a, a goal of lead generation in place. So when they provide us the contact info, they get something in return. That something in return can be, for example, a free consultation, a product recommendation, or even more information uh, about our services. Anything that we can, as a as a product, as a service provide, and they can use. So we can use that to create that relationship. And it's a give and take. So we provide you with a free service, free, free for example, recommendation, free consultation, anything. And you for, provide us your contact info so we can stay in touch, not to send you a promotional thing. Uh, the best lead generation system that I have seen is that they have a box that they say, I don't want to be sent any promotional info because why should you send promotional info to someone who doesn't want them? That doesn't work uh, anyway. And if you send them, they will just mark it as a spam and move on. So it's not good for your email score as well. So to create that, we want to, uh, to create a great lead generation, give something in return and ask for contact info. In that way, people have no problem. That, uh, and start a path of filtration. Filtration of who is your customer and who is not. And it's very, good, it's very important that you can uh, communicate that clearly with your customers. 
So you want to identify qualified leads from all of your prospects. And all of the people who land on your website are not your qualified leads. You don't want their information even. Uh, they can be your customers later, maybe years ago, years uh, later, but you want your qualified leads. The people who right now use, uh, want to use your service or in near future. They are basically part of your ICP. I will talk about ICP in a, in a, in a second, but it stands for ideal customer persona. If they are part of your ideal customer persona, you want them. If not, you want to give them something so they can remember you by positively. A good experience can be different for any business, but you want to give them a good experience, but ultimately say we are not the right fit, so you can use other services even. <clears throat> Let's talk about a few uh, systems in uh, lead generation. So that way you can get qualified leads and turn them into customers via your systems, via your product uh, from your UX and your customer support and customer success initiatives. You can create a great sales pipeline to identify and filter the fun sales funnel that you have from the prospects to satisfied customers. You can get feedback from those customers or potential customers on what is good with your startup, what is good with your product, and what is not good with your product. And you can scale your system to the next level. Especially in a startup and a startup, every feedback counts a lot because we don't have a lot of users at the start. We have like a younger startup might have like 100 users when they began. And each individual feedback can change the course of that startup because uh, we, do, we are on the beginning of what we should build for people. And every feedback can, uh, can show us why we have only, for example, 10 good uh, customers and why not 100, why 90 people chose not to use our product. So that feedback can show us because of these reasons, people are not using our product or service and we should change that. And getting feedback from the customers is super important. A great thing that we did is to uh, is a, we created a public roadmap that helped us a lot. The public roadmap, uh, what we call it, a building public roadmap, can uh, have all of the suggestions, all of the feedback, all of the votes on the features and everything on public. People can see it. Can, people can uh, see how people uh, voted, uh, what are their feedback, and uh, what features do they need more. And we can understand what features uh, most of our customers need first and faster, and we can uh, uh, adjust our system accordingly. So that roadmap and that voting system, that feedback system helped us a lot to understand how people are using our platform and how people, what is uh, the major drawback of people and pitfalls of our platform so they, they are not using formally more. So that roadmap helped us not only get a lot of qualified customers, but may make our product much better. So we talked about challenges of lead uh, generation, but the most important thing is to follow these steps accordingly. So we just want to target our own ideal customer persona, not everyone else. A lot of us want to talk about it with everyone at the same time. And uh, they want to attract everyone. That's not a good uh, uh, marketing strategy. You want to focus on niche markets and you want to focus on your ICP. Nothing else matters. So if you can get a niche market, if you can conquer a niche market first, then you can expand to more businesses. Creating a lead generation system that specify an exact, uh, exact ICP is very important. Uh, our relationship uh, with our website visitors, with our prospects, can be built inside our system. It's not something that we do for marketing. It's not an add-on feature. It's, it should be embedded into our product. It should be embedded to our services. Uh, we are nothing without that. So that's one of the most important part of our product. And it's not something that, that say, okay, cool, maybe we can uh, do it a couple of weeks, try it out. It's something that we should do from the moment that we start uh, working on our product, even without releasing, until our product is released and is launched and has thousands of users. 
So it's not something that we can pick, uh, uh, pick on that. Not all of our prospects are the same. So we should be prepared for different segments and different groups of our customers and provide them with different paths for lead generation. For someone, a newsletter subscription is great. Another one wants their customer portal. Another one wants a product recommendation quiz. Everyone is different and we should nurture them accordingly. As always, it goes without saying that the way that we can say that our uh, lead generation platform is working or not is by looking at the data. If people are signing up, if people are interacting with us, if people are engaging with us, and more, most important and than everything else, if enough people from prospects are coming to become our qualified leads, and if enough qualified leads are becoming our customers, it's working. So we have to monitor these data and these KPIs daily, weekly, and monthly to see, okay, why not enough people uh, uh, interacting with our uh, lead generation systems? Why not enough people go to our chatbot or do a quiz with us or answer our surveys or provide us speed feedback, anything? So there's something wrong and we should change something in, in the process. And we should adapt our system accordingly. Here, uh, uh, here the feedback and change accordingly. People don't like to see a perfect startup from the start. And no startup is perfect from the start. But people love the startups that are uh, getting better every day. So people don't want perfect. They want, uh, they want the, a startup who is getting better. <clears throat> we talked about ICP a lot. But we want to talk about it a little bit more. So, ICP is the most important thing when you design your lead generation system and for that matter, your marketing effort as a whole for demand generation and your marketing projects and campaigns, even your product, to be honest. It stands for ideal customer persona. So who is exactly my customer? And you should know that by heart. And if the answer is everyone in the world, uh, uh, everyone in my country, every uh, for example, a woman between the age of 25 and 35, that's not your ICP. These are just big groups of uh, people uh, who, who are not your ICP. The ideal customer persona is the segment of people or businesses who get the most out of your product and service. And it's not only that, and you have a way to reaching them. So it's a two-way street. So they should have, they should uh, see enough benefit of your product and services to be attracted to them, but also you should be able to go after them and sell your services to them. So if I'm creating, I don't know, a, a, a pen and my customer is NASA uh, and companies like that, and I have no way of uh, selling that soft system to NASA, it's not my ICP because I have a no way of communication with them. So look at it both ways. So with, when it comes to ICP, we start with the niche market. What is the niche market? The niche market is that a very small market that I identify that is full of my ICPs and I can reach them for many reasons. For example, I have a lot of connections in that area. I have a background of working there. Uh, it's near to, to my house, I can drive there, anything. But it's full of my ICPs. I have a lot of potential customers there and it's a very, very small market so I can master that. Example, when a Slack started uh, to uh, be born and uh, start working, they said, okay, since we are a startup and we are tech savvy and our founder is famous for uh, working with startups, we can get, uh, and since we are in Silicon Valley, we can uh, start with uh, startups in Silicon Valley. So startups and younger startups, not bigger startups, as the younger startups, uh, for example, less than 100 people in Silicon Valley. When, and they put that as their niche market and ICP. They knew their ideal customer persona were businesses, but they couldn't have uh, 
answer all of the business uh, uh, demands and future requests at the same time. So they narrow it down. They said, okay, our ICPs are young startups who value communication more than anything else. They're not looking to have email as a communication system. So they are using an alternative. Right now, they are not using email. They are using IRC. They are using uh, Telegram or whatever that, that was popular back then. They are using an alternative right now, young startups. Speed is important. OK, I cannot uh, sell to a startup in New York. I can sell to a startup that is close to me. So I can go there by foot and uh, basically sell it in person. So they said young startups in Silicon Valley. And for, for the first 10, uh, uh, 10 to uh, 50 customers that they had, they said, we will install the system and teach you how to use it in person. And we will do all the work so they can get the sales. So that's a definition of a good niche market. And once they secured Silicon Valley, they uh, uh, expanded, expanded, expanded to uh, New York, to Seattle, to US, to uh, US, Canada, Europe, and then all over the world. So that's the main thing that you have to do. The lead generation system should address the ICP and the niche market that you chose very carefully, and it should be adjusted to what they want and based on their feedback, grow. Now I give the mic back to Noosh to tell you more about the lead generation system that you can build. Thank you, Farouk. And I hope all of you enjoyed the part. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below and we would be more than happy to answer your questions. So uh, let's talk about lead magnets and how you can use different types of effective lead magnets to generate more qualified leads for your business. So a lead magnet is a valuable piece of content or an offer that you can provide, as you, as Farah mentioned, to your target audience in exchange for their contact information. So this contact information can be their email address or their phone number, and um, they can be a very crucial um, aspect of your lead generation process. So uh, you can use uh, different types of lead magnets to build your email list so that you can contact those people later and uh, you can use them to uh, demo uh, your values to them and uh, tell them how you can help them uh, to grow their business, to um, do whatever your uh, platform helps them to. Uh, and also you can use lead magnets to segment your ideal customer profiles uh, to segment your leads. For example, you generate lots of leads and now you can use lead magnets to segment them, uh, to create different segments of ICPs that are ideal for your business. And when you segment them, uh, you can uh, send them personalized uh, content. For example, when you have a segment for HR people, uh, people who are working in human resources, uh, you can send them content that is relevant for their um, for their work, and you can send them content relevant for HR. Or for marketing teams, you can send content that is relevant to what they are doing and not send uh, HR content to marketing teams. So uh, by segmentation, you can send um, very specific and ready to use uh, content like a piece of cake for your uh, ICP so you can um, nurture them. And also you can qualify your leads. You can understand if this lead is your customer, it has the potential to be your customer or not. So lead magnets uh, are perfect and essential for these purposes and you can use them. So uh, let's, uh, let's explore the different types of effective lead magnets. Of course, it's not limited to this list. There are many lead magnets you can use as Farouk mentioned, chatbots is a very good uh, lead magnet you can use for um, uh, both supporting your customers and answering their questions. And in return, you will get their contact information so you can send the, uh, the answer to their questions and more content relevant to that question later. 
So the different types uh, include, but is not limited to checklists and templates. For example, in Formaloo, you can just get on templates. There are more than 200 templates ready for use and you can just start super easily. Uh, the other ways are webinars and uh, different events, workshops, uh, live or recorded sessions that offer valuable information uh, that is often uh, with interactive elements. Uh, people can ask questions and uh, they engage your customers. And in return for joining this webinar, uh, you will contact, uh, you will collect their contact information. The other ways are case studies or success stories. Uh, people really love to read uh, different case studies of how people use your platform, how people have succeeded uh, when using your platform, and also free trials. As Farah mentioned, for example, you can offer free uh, trial or just let everyone sign in for free and use the platform. This is a great lead magnet that uh, engages people with your platform and then uh, uh, monetizes them on the way. So uh, other ways to do it is using ebooks and uh, different white papers. Uh, for example, you can create valuable information, valuable content in ebooks and um, share it with everyone and ask for their email addresses in exchange for access to the ebooks and uh, and actually you can create a simple form maybe using formulu uh, to um, um, let them sign up and like leave their contact information leave their email business name and uh, when they sign up uh, when they uh, fill out that form they will receive uh, a, an email containing uh, your PDF file uh, in exchange. So uh, write in their inbox. So this is a very good way. Uh, you have seen it on different websites and is it's easy to do in Formaloo. You can just create the form and uh, customize the email address and done. Uh, so, uh, what other ways you can create lead magnets are using quizzes and surveys and assessments. So, uh, quizzes are a very engagement tool for uh, generating leads because uh, the more engaging your quiz are, quizzes are, the more you can generate leads. For example, you can create product recommendation quizzes. For example, you create a quiz that is asking for the person's uh, maybe traits, maybe different uh, ideas, behaviors, and uh, in exchange, um, you recommend them some products. For example, you ask for what colors they like, what uh, this is for e commerces You ask for what colors they like, what, um, uh, what type of materials they like. And uh, after they finish the quiz, they will receive some, um, uh, some products of the e-commerce that is relevant to their answers. And of course, you can do it uh, with formal as well. And uh, what others is uh, different uh, resource libraries, for example, ac access to a collection of um, articles or videos or templates that are uh, for like um, um, paid people or people who sign up. And uh, let's go through lead nurturing process. So the process of uh, lead nurturing uh, is a, an essential way uh, to um, nurture your leads and uh, convert uh, your customers. So uh, you first start with acquiring the leads. Uh, this is the stage where uh, your lead generation comes into play. Leads are initially acquired uh, through various channels such as forums on your website or chatbots um, or different places. So they get to your website and uh, enter uh, enter their information somewhere in the email, in the form, in the newsletter subscription, maybe uh, in the chatbot, in the contact us page. Um, in the quiz you created on your website. So there are different places they can enter their information and even um, 
when they sign up for free. So this is uh, where you uh, acquire uh, the leads and then you get to the segmentation. So um, here uh, you can segment and you should segment your leads uh, into different segments based on the factors like uh, demographics, behavior, interests, and Farah talked about uh, segmentation uh, and your ICP. So this allows for more personalized uh, communication. So um, without segmentation, you cannot per personalize uh, your communication and you cannot create a, a, a powerful uh, contact with your leads. So uh, segmentation is very essential for, in this stage. And uh, then you can create content for those uh, ICPs. So you can develop relevant and valuable content that address the needs and pain points of each segment. Uh, this content can include blog posts, emails, webinars, and any other type of content you, uh, your, your customers, your ICP, um, uh, interact with more. So uh, by understanding your ICP, you know uh, what type of content they like, so you can create content uh, for that channel. And uh, as the fourth stage of the process, um, is, uh, we have lead engagement. So at this stage, you send tailored content to each segment and keep leads engaged with your brand. Uh, this content should educate, inform, and uh, build trust with your leads. So this is where you can uh, create that trust. This is where you can uh, communicate uh, transparently and uh, build that uh, rapport. And uh, as the fifth stage, we have lead scoring. So here you can assign scores to your leads based on their engagement and interactions. And uh, the higher scores indicate more qualified leads. So the scoring depends on your business and uh, it's not something that anyone else can create for you. You as the owner of the business know best how to score your leads and how to uh, qualify them. So based on different aspects of your leads, you can score them and uh, then understand who is more qualified. Then uh, we get to the automated workflows. And uh, here we use uh, marketing automation tools to automate the delivery of content, emails, and responses to specific lead behaviors. And uh, then is personalization. So here we customize our communications based on lead behavior and preferences, creating a more personalized experience. And the more you understand your ICP, the better you can personalize your communication. And uh, then is sales handoff. So it's clear. So when a lead reaches a certain level of engagement and uh, scoring, they are passed to the sales team for direct contact. And here is where um, your sales team comes in and uh, engages with the uh, lead to uh, take them to the final step. And don't forget to iterate, uh, which is the continu continuous um, nurturing. So uh, even after a lead converts into a customer, continue nurturing the relationship to encourage loyalty and uh, repeat business. Uh, having a one-year contract isn't enough for your business. You want them to um, continue their relationship with you. They, you want them to um, subscribe again. You want them to, you want a longer, this longer term business. So keep in touch with them and continue nurturing, learn from your uh, previous um, experiences and improve your processes. And now let's get to the tools and technologies you can use for uh, lead nurturing. So, of course, the first thing is forms and surveys. So, uh, first thing you use forms and surveys as the first step of the lead nurturing process, which is lead generation. Uh, you use forms and surveys to collect leads, and then you need CRMs to 
uh, organize this data and uh, manage this data and, uh, and create your sales pipeline as the last step of the lead nurturing process. So uh, of course you can create your CRM uh, and customize it in Promobit too, uh, but you can also connect your forms and surveys with uh, other CRMs as well. And uh, there is automation tools. So there are different automation tools like Zapier, like Make. Uh, these are great for automating your marketing efforts and email marketing softwares like um, Brevo uh, uh, and MailChimp. These are great for uh, emailing your customers and active campaign. So uh, they are great for nurturing your leads, sending them content because you have their contact information, right? So uh, you can send them emails and nurture them uh, and send them personalized and customized content uh, for each ICP. Then we have analytics and reporting tools. Um, so there are different tools. Uh, uh, all forms, uh, form builders provide this, formally does it too. Uh, CRMs have it, uh, email services have it, and uh, you, of course you can use Google Analytics uh, for all of the analytics and reportings. And uh, then we have uh, different lead scoring tools. Of course, Formula does that too. So you can assign variables and uh, assign values to your customers and leads and score them. And now let's get to the strategies to increase conversion rates. So the first strategy is using educational content. Of course, educational content matters a lot because you have to first give something to your leads in so they can give you something in return uh, it's not vice versa so always think that you should give something to your customers first and uh, with educational content the goal is to provide content that educates leads about their pain points and offers solutions and timely follow up with responding uh, promptly to lead inquiries or actions to maintain their interest. And uh, you can do iteration, you can A-B test and continuously test different elements of your nurturing and uh, optimize for higher conversion rates. And also multi-channel engagement uh, by utilizing a mix of emails, social media, and other channels that work for your business. Uh, and no, no two businesses are the same. So the channels can differ uh, based on your business. So engage with your customers on different channels and um, find where they are most active so you can be there. With social proof, you can showcase testimonials, case studies, and reviews to build trust. And then there is remarketing. Uh, you can target leads who, are, uh, who have shown interest, but didn't convert with retargeting ads. So retargeting ads uh, are great for um, remarketing leads who have uh, come to your website, but didn't sign up or didn't uh, fill out your forms or chatbot. So you can uh, use retargeting ads uh, to uh, target them again and bring them back to um, uh, become your lead. And then we have personalization. Of course, again, the most important part is uh, crafting personalized messages and offers based on lead behavior and preferences. So uh, you can, the, the very simple, the most simple way uh, in personalization um, that I always uh, give as an example is a, a form. Uh, when you have uh, the first question as what's your name? And in the next question, uh, you, you type in like, my name is Noosh. And in the next question is, uh, hi Noosh, uh, what's your email address? So this is the simplest uh, personalization you can build uh, in lead nurturing. So use that, uh, Formula has it as answer piping. Uh, check it out, uh, there's a video for it on YouTube. And it's a great way to uh, convert leads, leads that uh, start answering your forms, quizzes, surveys, and um, wants to get more engaged. So now let's get to KPIs. 
So uh, what KPIs are great for measuring during your lead generation uh, processes? Uh, conversion rate is the percentage of website visitors who take your desired action. And the desired action can vary based on your business. It can be signing up uh, or signing up for a newsletter or signing up at your website uh, or filling out a contact form. It can, be, it can vary based on your lead generation strategies and uh, processes. And then uh, the quality of lead matters a lot because many people can fill out your forms, many people can sign up, but not all of them might use your services. Not all of them might pay you for your services. Not all of them might um, be your future customers. They just signed up because it was cool and it's easy, right? You, you want to make the lead generation uh, and the forms Easy, super easy. So it's easy, so they sign up, but they might not be your end customer. So be aware of that and know that you have to qualify them. Uh, again, with scoring methodologies and different um, tactics, you can score them and qualify them. And then we got the cost per lead. So how much time and energy and of course money are you spending uh, on uh, your lead generation uh, process? And you should calculate the cost of acquiring each lead. Uh, this metric helps you assess the efficiency of your lead generation campaigns and uh, it's essential. Then we got the return on investment or ROI. Uh, you should measure the return on investment for your lead generation efforts by comparing the revenue generated from leads to the cost of acquiring them. And the lead velocity matters also. Track the rate at which leads are generated. A consistent increase in lead velocity indicates healthy growth. So uh, you should be aware of it. And then we got the channel specific metrics. Depending on your lead generation channels, uh, it can be social media, email marketing, SEO, uh, whatever channel you have. Um, track specific KPIs like click through uh, rates uh, and open rates or organic search traffic. Uh, these can be very essential in your lead generation KPIs. And then we get to the analytics and tracking tools. Of course, the form builders are great uh, because uh, most of them, like Formaloo, uh, give you the um, analytics. Like, and you, and uh, even in Formaloo, you can create custom reports for uh, whoever uh, are is generated as your leads in the forms and surveys and quizzes. And then we get the Google Analytics, of course, uh, that you can even embed in your forms and uh, you can embed in different places to track um, your, your leads and how they are behaving on your form, on your website, and um, to track which part of your funnel, your process um, is, is a bottleneck and you can fix it later. Then we got the CRM software. Uh, there are different CRM softwares. Uh, of course, you can create your custom CRM in Formaloo, but uh, to get more comprehensive and not, if you don't have time to customize the CRM, uh, you can use the pre-made ones. And uh, there is email marketing analytics tools. Uh, like uh, all email marketings give you comprehensive uh, data and information about who opened your emails, who clicked on different links, and uh, how they interacted with your email. So this way you can um, improve uh, your emails and uh, how they're performing. And of course, as everything else, you should iterate and uh, you should iterate to improve. So uh, optimize uh, based on your learnings and uh, make sure that you have regular analysis, consistently review your KPIs and analytics to identify trends and areas for your improvements. And A-B test experiment with different approaches such as changing call to action buttons, form fields, or content, and analyze which variations perform better. Then we get to segmentation. 
again, one of the most important parts. Use lead data to segment your audience. Use your data. Don't let it waste. And uh, use it to segment your audience and tailor content and offer for uh, different groups. And then we get to content optimization. Continuously update and improve your content uh, to stay relevant and address evolving needs of your audience. And for lead nurturing refinement, you should uh, evaluate the effectiveness of your lead nurturing and uh, make adjustments to improve conversion rates. Then we get to the feedback loop. And uh, it's a perfect way, uh, as Farouk mentioned, um, your customer's feedback matters a lot. So make sure that you get enough feedback using feedback forms. Um, super, the easiest way is to send out a feedback form and ask for, the, uh, for their opinions. And um, don't ever underestimate your competitors. So uh, monitor your competitors' lead generation strategies and incorporate successful tactics to your own. So learn from your competitors and see how they are generating leads. And of course, you can use those strategies too. So I want to share with you some of the use cases that um, you can use Formaloo to generate your leads and uh, nurture your leads and improve your business and improve the number of your customers. So uh, as Farouk mentioned, you can create a roadmap as we have uh, created a roadmap. Uh, just go to formaloo.com and, and scroll down uh, to the footer and there is a roadmap link you can check out. And uh, that's our portal uh, with our community. And our community tells us what to uh, add to the, what feature to add to the product next. And we, we just go for it. And it's that simple. It's a form. People can uh, vote for their features. And um, based on the number of features, we develop um, the most requested ones. Another use case I can mention is the CRM uh, that we, uh, our CRM is in, built in Formaloo and uh, we use Formaloo to uh, create our CRM and, and we have created our sales pipeline there and we have integrated it with different tools to um, have it best. Then we got the membership customer portals. Many of our customers are agencies and agencies use Formaloo to uh, create customer portal and membership customer portals in which their clients can sign up, log in, and uh, use formal services uh, easily with, uh, with that. Then uh, the simplest example I can give you is contact forms. You can embed in your website and easily generate more and more leads. And of course, another example that Farouk mentioned is the chatbots that you can embed in your website. You uh, use Formaloo uh, templates with a click and you have the chatbot and just embed it in your website and customize it for yourself and you're done. Uh, in this webinar, uh, we, re we explored uh, the different uh, lead generation strategies, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this webinar was packed with strategies and tactics for lead generation, lead nurturing, and automating your marketing efforts when it comes to uh, lead generation. So I hope you liked it and uh, I'd like to invite you all to join our upcoming webinars. Uh, you can find them, all of them in our LinkedIn page and uh, you can just click join and join them. So go to LinkedIn, search Formaloo and uh, uh, look for the events section. And there you will see all of the upcoming events. And thank you. I want to thank you all for joining this webinar and thank you, Farouk, for sharing your insights. If you want to, uh, if um, you want to generate and nurture qualified leads, don't miss this opportunity to use Formula services. Formula supports you on many stages of your lead generation strategy from uh, form builders, from CRMs, from membership portals, uh, from chatbots and uh, it helps you engage your customers efficiently. And lastly, happy formal week. Bye.